Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn what is joiner transformation and how to create joiner transformation in Informatica IDMC. First, let us understand what join SQL mean with an example. Say for example, we have a table called employee and it contains employee ID, name, department ID and salary as the columns. And we can see three rows of data here, right? And if you observe, so each employee has a department ID. So with this, we don't get the information about the employee, which department uh, the employee belongs to, right? So if there was a department name, then that could be a you know, useful information for uh, like where the employee actually belongs to, which department the employee belongs to, right? So we do have another table called department, which has the mapping of department ID to department name. You can see here, it has two records in it, right? Now, the requirement is like uh, we have employee information, right? So instead of department ID, we wanted to have department name here in this table, right? So we can't, uh, so how do we get them? So for that, so that's a problem, right? So how do we solve it is, so using joins. So using join concept, we are gonna display this information, employee information along with the department name. So, so what is join and how to use it is, so in order to use join, so there are, Two types, like two conditions, right? So two things we need to keep in mind. The first thing is join condition, right? So what is join condition is? So two sources or two tables should have at least one common column, meaning one co column in common which has common data. So uh, the depart, you know, if you see these two tables, department ID is common. So the name of the column need not be the same. So this can be even DPT ID as well. Right, so the name of the column doesn't matter, but the column data matters. So it has to have the common data. So in that case, what we can do is we can apply join condition on this column so that we can actually join this two tables or two sources and get information in one table, the consolidated output, right? So that's how we are gonna join two tables. And second thing, so when you are talking about join concept, two things has to be considered, right? So this is about join condition. And uh, we can have multiple condition, multiple joint conditions as well. So for that, we need to have more more than one common column in two tables. So that we need to remember. And second thing is joint type. So what is joint type is like there are four types of joints. So inner join, where you know the common data between the two tables will be fetched. So the com common data instance. So we write a joint condition, right? So the matching records between the two tables will be fetched and that will be displayed. And there is something called left outer join. So when we join the tables, two tables, we specify the table order, right? So table one uh, join on table two, right? So in that case, uh, the first one which we specify becomes left one and the and the next one will be the right, right table is what we call it as. So left order join, actually what it does is it actually fetches the matching records between the two tables based on the join condition. And also it retrieves the rest of the records remaining, which are all remain in the left order ta left table that will be displayed to the result set, right? So exactly the reverse of it is right order join, right? So what is right order join is the common columns or the common data between two tables will be fetched and then the rest of the records from the right table will be fetched and displayed into the test result. And we do have something called full order join. So where the matching records from both the tables will be displayed and then the remaining records of left table and the remaining records of right table will also be added to the test result and will be displayed. So this is about the join types. So whenever we are talking about joins, these two are important join condition and on which we have to match the records. And the second thing is join type. So there are four types of joins. So the same four types will be, you know, represented in a different way in joiner transformation. I'll show you that when we are discussing about joiner transformation. All right, so this is at a high level what a join in SQL means. And uh, at least this level of knowledge is required to understand what joiner transformation is. So now let's jump on to joiner transformation in IDMC and how to create it. So this is my Informatica IDMC data integration. So you log into IDMC, select data integration service, and then, you know, you can create your project and optionally you can create one folder in it, and then you should be creating a mapping. So what we are going to do as an example here is 
So I already created a table in Oracle. So this will be my source first table. So we're gonna execute this so select star from customers, right? So this is customers table, and we do have orders table as well. So let me show you the orders table. Orders table is on my flat file. So you see orders.csv file here, right? So the data of it is here. So it's an orders data. So order ID, you can see on the left, first column is orders ID, customer ID. So who bought the, who actually placed the order. So the customer ID of it, order date and total amount is present here, this data. So we have two sources, right? Now we wanted to, we will be taking this an example and we will be seeing how to create a joiner transformation. So before that, let us first understand what joiner transformation actually, what, what it means, right? So join, we understood what is joiner transformation in Informatica IDMC. So this joiner transformation can be used to join data between two related heterogeneous sources. So two related heterogeneous sources. What does it mean? So let's go back. I'll just put it here. So this means joiner transformation can be used to join data from two related heterogeneous sources. So what is related is, so related means there has to be at least one field in each source which has common data between the sources. That's what we mean by related. And what is heterogeneous? Heterogeneous meaning sources can be of different types. So when we are talking about joints, right? So in the previous example, we talked about two tables, meaning two RDBMS, right? So it can be in any other type as well. So we talked about, say, for example, Oracle. So it did not be you know, two tables or two sources will not be of Oracle type. It can be of a different type. One table can come from Oracle, other table can uh, come from SQL Server or anything else, right? So we can still join them. So that's the reason we are seeing heterogeneous. So if we are joining the two sources of same type, those are called as homogeneous. If they are different, then it is called as heterogeneous. That's all. So it need not be RDB missed altogether. So it, need, it can be of a different uh, source type as well. Say, for example, the second type uh, of source can be a flat file even. That's what I'm taking an example and showing you now, right? So one source is customers, which is RDBMS Oracle. Second source is orders, right? So this is of flat file, different source type. Now we are going to try to join these two sources, right? So that's what the definition says. So join and transformation can be used to join data from two related heterogeneous sources. So again, we need to specify when we are saying about join. So two, we need to specify two things, join condition, join type. We'll see that. But if you observe the data here, customer's data. So customer ID, customer name and country. So maybe this is like address of the customer, right? So let's observe the orders. So we have an order information here, fine. So customer ID who placed the order and when it was placed and what the total amount, fine. But I need the customer information. So where where the customer is has been placed this uh, order from, and what's the customer name? I wanted that information as well. So how do we get that? We do have the information of the customers in Oracle, but how do we actually consolidate and put it here along with this data, this order table is? So we are gonna join these two sources. So and to join the sources, we need to have the join condition. And what the join condition says? It has to have that at least one common column data. So if you observe customer ID is common in both. So we are going to use this customer ID to join these two sources now and then display the result set. So along with the order information, we'll also get the customer information. Who are. So if you print the customer ID, right? So it will be a number, it will be, you will see a data, but you don't get the actual information of the customer, right? So instead of that, what you are going to do is we'll also display the customer information. Say for example, customer name and country. Right, so that's what we are gonna do now using joiner transformation. So now, so in order to create the joiner transformation, we first need to create the mapping. So log into IDMC, select the data integration service, click on new mappings, and then create. So you'll get source and target, right? Source, source, and target. Now we have two sources, right? So we are gonna you know, we are going to join two sources. So let's bring in another source here. So first source, I'm going to name it as, it is my customers, right? Customer source. So source customers. And 
So, okay, let's first complete the first source, source customers, right? So, source, let me select down source, and this is Oracle. It is coming from Oracle database, see, right? So, I already created a, a connection for Oracle, so you can see it is there already. If you want, we can test it. Oh. I can test the connection, so it, it shows the connection is successful, all right? So, I can use that connection as my source, right? Source type single object, object. So I have to select the customers here. This will be our first source. Optionally, you can preview the data. So I'm skipping the step now. So click on fields, you will see the incoming fields of the table here, customer table, customer ID, customer name and country. So this is what we have seen, right, in the table. All right. So we configured source, first source now. Next, go to second source. So name it as, it's an orders table, right? So SRC orders. Then we'll select source. This source is coming from a flat file. So the flat file is present on my secure agent machine. So that's a condition that should be present on the secure agent machine. Flat file, single object, and object we have to select. So, if you want, you can optionally test the connection as well. See, let me show you the connection. So, this is the place where I have the file, orders.csv file, and the connection is successful. All right. Now, let's select the object that is orders.csv file. It is here. So, let me select that. And if you go to fields, you can see the fields of the orders source, right? All right. So we configured two sources now. All right. Now what we need to do, we wanted to join these two sources, right? So how do we join? So we need a join a transformation for that. So on if you see on this source to target, you see a bulb symbol, right? So you can click on it, three horizontal dots and select join a transformation here. Or you can also select it from the left side design wizard. So you can see here. Here, you will find the joiner transformation, right? So you can drag and drop it here as well, right? Once you drag and drop here, so you'll see a plus symbol here. That is for actually, you know, joining two sources, right? So we already have the one source and the, we need to join the second source. So how do we do that? So observe now carefully. So I'm dragging the second source and when I hover on this plus symbol, it will give two options, master and detail. So just put this orders to detail, map this order source to detail. So you will have two, two groups here, master, so detail. So we call this as pipelines, master pipeline and detail pipeline. So our master group or detail group. So I have actually mapped my customer source to master and orders to detail. So it's always a best practice to map the source which has the minimal set of data, minimal data set to the master group, right? And the data so and the source which has more data can be mapped to detail pipeline right so this is what we need to do and then select joiner joiner transformation so you, you can see the incoming fields here and if you see this error it's a warning it just says field name conflicts detected because to make field names unique rename fields in the previous transformation change the renaming of in the transformation right so that is what it says so how do we resolve this feeling field name conflict is so why you are getting this field name conflict is, let me show you. So if you see in this customer table source one, so customer ID is a column, right? Now, if you go to orders.csv, even this has the same column name customer ID. So this is saying, how do I actually differentiate between these two columns is what it is saying. So just rename this, uh, just, you know, resolve this conflict is what it is saying. So how do we actually resolve this conflict easily is, so you have master and detail, right? Master is our customer table, detail is our order table, orders uh, source, flat file, right? So just click on rename. You can just prefix for all the for all the column names. So you can just say customer underscore C A C V H T underscore some identification, right? And then detail source, right? So it's an order table. So I'll just say add some prefix, something like this O R D. So that the naming conflict will be resolved, right? So once this is done, right? So go to join condition. So 
we said like two things are important when we are working with joints, right? Joint condition and joint type. So joint condition. So for now, let, let, let's put it. So joint condition will be simple. And joint type. So we have four types. Normal, master router. Master router, you can consider it as right router joint. So which says this, it includes all rows from detail pipeline, uh, but only matching rows from the master pipeline, right? Same for the detail outer as well. So you can consider this as the left outer. Meaning like the matching rows from the detail pipeline will be, detail pipeline with master pipeline will be displayed and the rest of the records, all the records from the master pipeline will be added, right? So that's what detail outer is. And full outer is anyway, like matching records and the rest of records from master and rest of records from detail. So those are the four joint types. For now, we'll go with normal. Normal is equal to inner joint. Now, Join condition. We need to add the join condition. Simple. And then we need to add the condition here by clicking on this plus symbol. Click on plus symbol. So we need to select master, master column. Master is customer column, right? So I'm going to select customer ID. And detail is also customer ID, right? Customer ID equal to customer ID will be my condition. All right. Now, let's go to target. So this is what we configure in joint transformation. Now let's go to target. So incoming field. So these are the incoming fields we have, right? Now, if you want, you can actually exclude uh, some of this. Say for example, customer ID is repeated here, right? So if you see customer ID is here and here. So we, if you don't want it to be displayed two times, then you can probably like, you know, rename this. Say for example, or what you can do is you can just add one more rule and you can exclude named field. Maybe I don't want it to display. So it has customer ID already in the customer, right? So I'll just remove it from order, order table, order source, right? So now it is excluded. So we'll have only customer ID once. All right. So this is optional. If you don't do that, so customer ID will be displayed in the results at two types. That's all. Nothing more happens. So now we are we have to specify the target. So where I wanted to move this data. So we are joining customer source from Oracle and orders uh, source, which is a flat file. And we are joining this, but where we have to write this result set, right? So the result will be I wanted to place it in Oracle. So I'm I'll be selecting my Oracle connection. And I don't have the table, so we'll be creating a front type. So a new table will be created. So see existing or create. I'll I'll be creating new at one type. So I'll call my result as customers orders info. All right, customers orders info will be my new table name. And you can even check this. So if it exists, so if you see here. The table is not there. Only customers table is here, right? So that's the reason we are creating a new one. All right. So, and rest of the things you can just keep default and target fields. You don't need to, uh, you will not have the target fields because the table is not there, right? Target table and field mapping also, you don't need to do that because you can't do it for sure. Fields will be mapped automatically as you have chosen to create a new target object when you run the mapping task. All right. So these are the resultant uh, fields which will be displayed in the target table. That is in Oracle table. So with this, we are done with creating a mapping. So you can just validate the mapping by clicking on this icon, which says valid. All right. Now you can save the mapping. And if you want, you can rename the mapping. It is mapping one, right? So maybe you can just, and you can also even rearrange this. So by clicking on this, it will be rearranged. And you can even say something like this. And they say like this, M joiner demo. All right, save the mapping. And you can run the mapping. So it converts to a mapping task. So it creates a mapping task. So make sure uh, your runtime environment, that is your security agent is up and running. And mapping is selected, then click on run. You can go to my jobs. Yeah, it says it is starting and it failed. So let's see why it failed. So if you see here, read the error message, why it failed. The joiner transformation joiner has master field, 
underscore customer ID with data type double, right? But detail field has customer ID with data type as n string, right? By default, any flat files, right? Any uh, semi-sectured uh, sources, right? So that will have the data type as strings. So, but customer ID in Oracle was double, that is numeric. So there was a conflict in data type. And uh, uh, when we are discussing about the joint condition, right? So what did we discuss? It has to have the common data, right? So in order to have the common data, it should be having the common data type as well, right? So that's the error. So how do we fix this? So let's go back to our source. Customers is fine. So that's an Oracle table, right? And it has uh, incoming field. Clearly, we can see that the incoming field is double customer ID. Now, what we are going to see is, do is we'll go to order source. This is coming from a flat file, right? So once we read that, what we'll do is field. We'll act, we have an option to edit the metadata. So click on options. You see edit metadata here. I'll click on edit metadata. You see customer ID here, right? So native type, select it and select it as number. So type will be selected as decimal automatically, right? So now save it. So what did we do here? So we got an error. The mapping task failed because of mismatch of the data type between the two sources. So this is the reason we are changing the data type. So ch change the data type in the sense not uh, dial after reading the, before reading the data into our informatic IDMC. So we are just making we are converting that uh, string to decimal because we know customer ID is actual numeric, right? So by default, all of them are in string. So as we know, customer ID is numeric. We are just changing the type here. All right. Now there is no mismatch between the two data types. So once you make that change, just run it again. That's it. Save the mapping and run it. It failed again. The joiner transformation joiner has master field with data type double, but detail field has decimal in the joiner. Oh, it has the same again. Did we save that? Let's check. Okay, we, we change it, right? Incoming fields. Customer ID is decimal, all right. Okay, maybe, okay, this is double, right? So, we have to go back. Let's edit the metadata again. And then we'll select it as double, right? So that was double. If you see, I thought double matches with decimal, right? But uh, yeah, double double is different to decimal data type. So you need to be careful with data types. So if you see, customers had fields had data type as double. So we need to have the same data type in the second source as well. So that's this is the reason we selected double. All right, so now we save the mapping and let's run it again and check. This time it has the exact data type match, right? Double matching with double, let's see now. Yeah, it is starting and it is queued now. It's running, it takes a few seconds for the job to complete and you can see success. Rose process 25. Let's click on this job and read the details. So you can see uh, the information about the job. Source customer, SRC customers, 10 success rows. So you can see there are 10 rows here, right? So all the read, all the rows has been successful, successfully read and orders has 25 records. So you can verify here, it has 25 records. And target has also 25 success rows affected. 25 rows, right? Now, how do we actually validate the data? So you can do select star from 
what was the table name? You can see here, yeah, customer's order info. It's been created. And now you can execute it and you can see the output here, right? So order data here, order ID, order date, total amount, customer ID, customer name, and customer country as well, right? <coughs> Sorry. So you can see the data here, 25 records has been joined. And we got the consolidated uh, view of the information about the customer and the order placed by the customer. So this is the use of uh, having joiner transformation, right? So, and uh, how do we actually, so say for example, you like this, you can actually modify, you know, you can go to incoming fields and, uh, uh, you know, you can go to join condition and uh, you, can, you can write out the other option, join type, right? So if you select detail outer, so you will get a different output, right? So matching records and also the remaining records of uh, uh, master, right? So like that, you can try different options as well. And, you know, like we have two sources. Now we have joiner trans, we had one joiner transformation, fine. Now, how do, how do you actually join more than, if you have more than two sources, right? So say for example, I have three sources. To be joined so how do we do that so in that case what we need to do is first we need to join two sources and then the joiner out transformation output right so this is the output of these two sources right so this should be considered as one source and you you are you'll be you'll be doing this you'll be having the source again third source and this will be source these two will be considered as the two sources now the output of the earlier two sources that is the joiner transformation will be considered as the first source and second source that is the actual third source right so again we'll have a, we'll join these two with a joiner transformation here we'll again have a joiner transformation we'll join this so this will be our master this will be our detail like right so if say for example if a fourth source again we'll have the fourth source here and then join it with a, another joint transformation and so on. So at any point of time, so if you have n sources to join, you will be creating n minus one joiner transformations. So this is all about joiner transformation in Informatica IDMC, right? So hope uh, you got the concept. So that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more trick content. And if you have any questions uh, or run into any issues, right? So leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.